Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a brand new puzzle. Um, and I don't know what sort of magic Marty Sears has been weaving over the Sudoku community, but this apparently this is a new puzzle. And yet we've had about a dozen recommendations already uh, insisting that we must try this on the channel. It's called Quad Code. Um, I had a quick skim through the rules, uh, which are <laughs> they're brilliant. I mean, it's a, it's effectively a quadruple Sudoku with ten lines, and believe it or not, this this is fog in the grid as well. So there isn't much fog, but there are, so there are six cells of fog that we're going to have to uh, reveal. Um, and people are saying this is their favourite puzzle of, of sort of of the year, um, which which given some of the puzzles that we have. We featured on the channel only even recently. It is quite an accolade. So Marty Sears has done it again, and I'm very much looking forward to having or trying to crack uh, his quad code in a moment or two's time. Now I don't have much news for you today, so just an appeal as usual. Um, or a couple of things I'll mention. We are we are working on a pack of puzzles to celebrate uh, 600,000 subscribers. Now we are not there yet, but we are closing in. Um, I think we've got about 500. 87,000 maybe something like that so if you are interested in in gaining access to a 600,000 pack of specially themed sudokus by some of the great and the good of the sudoku world um, and you're not subscribed that might be something to think about um, in the coming days it's, it's of course totally free to subscribe to a youtube channel um, and um yeah, we would be we would be grateful, and that the way we're going to show you our gratitude is with something quite special. Um, other than that, over on Patreon, we've got all our extra content, and I have some birthdays I would like to announce. So I will start off. I'll start off with Molly. Molly, I'm so sorry. This is totally my fault. I don't know how I missed it, but Molly, I know you turned 21 yesterday. And the reason I know this is your boyfriend Luke wrote to us in plenty of time, and somehow I missed the email. It was not in my diary, and for that I apologise. I hope that you have... Well, I, I know you like chocolate cake. Apparently you like Pringles as well. I have to say I'm partial to Pringles. A Pringle, a Pringle-filled chocolate cake, though, now that's probably a step too far. Um, but anyway, your boy, your boyfriend Luke says that he loves you very much and think you are doing and thinks you are doing an amazing job. Um, so I hope I hope you had a great day yesterday, and I'm sorry I didn't get the birthday announcement on the correct day. Uh, now, birthday announcements that I think are on the correct day. Um, Anastasia has turned 21 today. And I know this because your boyfriend Dylan wrote to us. Um, he described he described you, Anastasia, as his pride and joy. Um, and, and he's even very grateful for the fact you've started watching some CTC videos with him. So well done on that. I hope you enjoy them. Um, and then another birthday. Dan has turned 41 today. A prime number. And uh, Dan's wife, Anita, wrote to us and noted, Dan, that you were joining the prime numbered ages in your family, which apparently include 37, 43, 67, 71 and 13. Well, that's my phone buzzes. Um, so, yeah, Dan, happy birthday. And I hope you get some high quality chocolate cake to celebrate. And with that said and done, let us turn our attention to this this puzzle. Quad Code by Marty Sears, and I will read you the rules. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we have to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. In this puzzle, each digit from one to nine is represented by a letter from A to I. You must determine which letter represents which digit. When discovered, these can be entered into the orange boxes at the bottom. And that is true. We can click on these and enter in numbers. So that's that is doable. Um, the two by two area surrounding a quad circle must contain all of the digits represented by the letters in that circle. Right. So those four cells will include the numerical equivalent of B, the numerical equivalent of A and the numerical equivalent of G, um, etc. The digits over a grey line can be divided into one or more non-overlapping groups of adjacent cells, each of which sums to 10. Um, now, most of these grey lines are very short and stubby. 
Uh, yeah, I've just, I've just had a thought about that one as well. That one we have to be careful with. That could be double five. If that turns out to be something we have to think about, I apologise. But I'm, I'm just looking at it there thinking, just be careful with that. But there's a great big long ten, ten line here. Um, and all we have to do is, when so say those two added up to ten, then maybe those three add up to ten, those three add up to ten, something like that. So we can't overlap the groups that add up to 10. Maverick has just taken off 5 minutes and 25 seconds into the video. Well done, Maverick. We're about to get some aeroplane noise, and for that, I apologise. Um, the digits in a blue or yellow... The digits in a blue or yellow cage must sum to the total in the top left corner. Ah. <laughs> okay. So we are not told there's going to be a number under here and I think a number under here and we, we don't know what they are because the fog is, is obscuring the cage totals. Um, enter correct digits near the grey fog cells to clear the fog. No guessing is necessary. And that's all the rules. So do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. I think this has three stars out of five for difficulty. Um, but now, and now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, I'm tempted to start with the, I'm tempted to start with beef. It's very good that Marty has used all real words. Um, oh no, I'm not going to start with beef. I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with fade actually, because that square there is going to have to be an F because there's definitely an F in that quadruple and there's an F in that quadruple and the only cell that overlaps in both situations is that one. Right, so we're going to have to use the letter tool today. Um, I always have my t my letter tool turned on, but if you, if you don't know how to enter letters in the software, click the cog icon and see enable letter tool. Make sure that's turned on. And then you can see on next to the zero or oh, next to the zero on the number pad there is a nine slash a button if you click that you should have the option to enter in letters and you can either point and click or i think you can type them in let's see if i can type them in so i want to write f into that square and i can okay so that's fine um okay i'm going to change tack again <laughs> There's an age and a bag <laughs> that overlap with an ag <laughs> in this in this box. Those two digits must be ag, mustn't they? They must be an ag pair, I think. So e must be in this domino, and b must be in this domino. Now that doesn't seem to do very much, unfortunately. B, if um if you see that there's this is my classic quadruple tip. You can see B, B overlaps in those two quadruple clues. So we can ask where B goes in row one as a result, because B can't be in these squares and it can't be in these squares. So B must be in one of three positions in box one. I don't know. Maybe I should just fully pencil mark. No, I'm going to change. I was going. I was going to write idea into all four of those squares. I'm not going to do that. There's cab and ice here, so they overlap with a C. So we can write C into that square. So, hmm. well, yes, I see. Okay. Um. Ah, all right. I was going to talk about the chef clue, but I'm not going to talk about that. I'm actually going to talk about the beef clue, I think. Yeah, I am. So the beef clue needs to have two E's around it. Now, in order for there to be two E's around the beef clue, they're either going to be in that disposition because they mustn't see that they mustn't be in the same row of the Sudoku. So they can't be. They're either there, that means, or they're there. But if the if the E's were there, you couldn't put an E around this beg clue. That needs to have an E around it. So I think what we're actually being told is that that's an E, which means that's an E, which means these two squares are B and F, and we've got an F here. So that's an F, that's a B. 
And now my chef clue is actually a lot clearer than it was. What I was going to note is that that couldn't be a C. But now that has to be the C around the chef clue. And that has to be an H. And that might be helpful. Um, yeah, OK. Here's a point. I and D. So the die clue hasn't had its I and D yet. So that's an ID pair which means that the acid clue has got to have an AC pair next to the ID pair. Where, where is the A around the A quadruple clue? OK, so this, this puzzle, I don't think it's meant to be terribly difficult in terms of these, um, these quadruple clues, because they just seem to be filling, each other, filling themselves in, don't they? I haven't done anything clever yet. Um, yeah, where's the ID around the bid clue? It's got to be there, which means that this has got to have a B in it, which means there's got to be a B in one of those squares. I shouldn't have said actually that it was going well because I suddenly realized I've just, I know there's an E down here around the fade clue. Oh, bother. <laughs> I don't know if I just, um, OK, there's got to be a B in one of those two squares around the beg clue because of this B, which means there's a B in one of those two squares around the fib clue. Ah, no, that's not right. What I was about to say was nonsense. Oh, dear. Oh, ID are a pair here um, in box in box five, just by dint of Sudoku. There's an ID pair here, and as a die pair, we should call them a die pair, and then a die pair. Um, okay. Ah, all right, there's a B in one of those squares, and there's a B in one of those squares. So we can ask where B should go in column one, and the interesting thing about that is, look, B has to go in one of those three squares, but we've already got a B pencil mark in one of these three squares in box one. So the only square that's simultaneously in that string and that string is this one. So we get a B in the corner. <laughs> yes, it does right. That's B in the corner. That's B in the spotlight, losing its religion. Right, where do you put the B around the bed clue now? It can't go in any of those three squares by Sudoku with this B. So that's got to be a B. So now around the cab clue, the A is vertical, which means around the idea clue, the A has got to be in this domino, which means A is, oh, nearly. I thought we were going to get the A in, in this sequence. Um, OK. B. Oh, I see. Right. OK, so now we probably want to look at the E and the D that have to be around this clue, because this square cannot be E or D, can it? Because idea is telling us that E and D in box one are in this little congregation of digits. So in fact, this has to be an ED pair. I don't know if we can do well so what that's doing is it's positioning a around idea this is an ed pair let's mark that in so i is now vertical in this domino in box one which means i is in one of those squares in box three Hmm. OK, we're doing OK, but it's we're not really storming through ever since, ever since I said it was going well. It's not gone well, which is very annoying. Um, what are those three digits then? We sort of know what they are. Well, we know what letters they are. We've had we've had A, B, C, D, E and I. So it's the middle letter F, G, H, I think, is what these are. Ah, I don't know. That's no use. Um, Oh no, that is useful. So that's got to be a G around the bed clue. Sorry, that's that's been fairly obvious for ages if we'd focused on it. So we've got G on a 10 line clue. 
h has got to live in one of those three squares. Oh, I see. That's quite nice. All right, let's look at this 10-line clue. That, has, that is a b joining to d or i. So how could that be a b? If that's a b, we know that b partners up with d or i to add up to 10, because that's what happens here. But if that's a b, that can't be d or i, because d or i live in this domino in box 2, so that's not b. So that's b. Don't. No, no, that means that's b. It does do something. It didn't, doesn't do much, but it does did something. Right. So can that, if this was B, this would be I or D. C. This is C. This is on another 10 line. That goes... Well, we've got to put I and E. Oh, look, we've got to put I and E in this sequence. So that can't be E. So that's got to be D, which means that's got to be... Does it... Um, yeah, it does mean that has to be E. Because this can be neither. So these were effectively a pair. So these two squares... Now, this is an ID pair again. Um, we've Okay, so look there. Yeah, that's interesting. So we've got two ID pairs, which are not a deadly pattern because they're going to be resolved by whatever this turns out to be. Imagine this clue didn't exist. There were, I don't think there would be anything in the puzzle logic, the internal logic of the puzzle that would say whether this was D on top of I or I on top of D. Um, but this, this 10 line is going to sort it out. Okay, so did we learn anything new? We now know E is definitely in one of those squares by Sudoku. Um, that's probably useful. <laughs> uh, he says, desperately trying to work out what on earth to do now. Oh, I see. Look, I've got A and G joined on, on a 10 line here, and I've got a G here. So that's got to be, you've guessed it, an A. Oh, which we seem to have almost... Oh, no, that's good. So that's A. That's C. A has got to be in the fade clue. So now that's got to be D, because this is an AE pair, which is resolved. Ah, lovely. Okay, so that's a little bit of progress all of a sudden. That now can't be D by Sudoku. This D is resolving D and I in box number eight. We've got loads of digits, look, in row eight. We've not got C and H. Can we do that? Uh, I don't know, there's probably a way, but I can't, I can't see it immediately. It doesn't matter if you repeat a digit along here, I don't think. Oh, but if that's C or H, it's not I or B. And I've got to put I and B around my fib clue. So these are now an IB pair. And that means in this row, I've not put in a G, G and H. You get, oh, hang on, where's G in this row? I've got big. <laughs> this is spells out big. Um, so that's got to be H, which means that's now C, which means that's now H. And that one, by a process of elimination, is C, I think. Let's just check. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Yeah, that seems right. So these digits over here are going to be... I'm not very good at doing this. B, D, and I. So bid, these spell. And that one can't be a B. Oh, well, hang on. That one can't be a B either. So that's B. Sorry, that's been available for a while. And that, oh, look, this is all done. That's a D. That's an I. So now my I around my ice clue is placed. This column ought to be, ought to be completable. We have not put F into it, I don't think. So that's an F, which means there's an F along with an E in this domino. These squares are now, let's delete the corner pencil mark and put G in with 
A, A weren't, yeah, I was going to say, weren't A and G together on a line? So can we get this digit somehow? Uh, I'm not sure is the answer. This is B or I, and it's on a 10 line. I suppose uh, we don't actually know, do we? Because we don't know what this is. Hmm. I wondered whether I could sort of use the mishmash of those to do something there, but perhaps not. All right, so where else could we go? We could complete the rest of box one in terms of pencil marking. We've not put in C, I want to say C, G and H. Well, if that's right, that's a C. B, F, C. We've got G and H here. <laughs> It's amazing how much more difficult I find it to work in letters than numbers. Um, now, if that's a C, is that useful? Where, yes, where is C? By Sudoku in box three. I think it's in the bag clue. So that's a C. So there's a C in one of these two squares. Where, where is F in this box? Ah, this is good, actually, because F is in this domino along with E, but I've got an E here that I'd never noticed. So that's E, that's F. And now these squares are now known. They are a congregation of D, I and H. Ah, I typed in the wrong digits. D, D, I, H, hid. So we've got a hid clue here, and that's not H. And that's not D. So that's not D in the corner. We've got a high in the corner. Um, we've got A here. So that does the A and the G over there. Which does the G and the H over here. So we've got a DI pair in row two. So the digit we've not put into row two is F. I think I think that's an F that's on a 10 line have we got any other F's on 10 lines oh near I thought we were going to be able to rule out um, if we could have got rid of a C from here we would have been in good shape ah no what's going on in row three then because we've also got a DI pair there a B we've not put C in at all that's a C oh so we can do it it's, it's actually the opposite way around to the way I thought it was going to go because that's now H by Sudoku. This has become G by Sudoku. It sees um, F and H above it. Um, but now C and F add up to 10, which means on this one, that's a C, so that's actually disambiguating this 10 line. Is that doing more? I don't know. Uh, and up at the top there, we haven't put in A, E, and, <laughs> why is it so difficult, G, A, okay, I've got E and G looking up there, so we've got an age clue, so that becomes A, and this becomes E, G, is that resolved? I don't think it is. This is DI. Oh no. Um, I, don't, I don't know what to do. Okay, what can we do now? Is it gonna be... Uh, it's a strange puzzle actually, because it looks like we're going to almost complete the quadruples. And then we're going to have to think about what on earth we're meant to do with the rest of this. There's a D here. That's a D. So that's an I. So, oh, I thought I was going to get D in, um, in box six, but no. I? No. I don't know much about I's. 
Well, uh, maybe I can just do some Sudoku then. I know I resist this, but perhaps it's possible. C hair knocks C out of that one. So that becomes a C. I'm not... Have I got all the C's in the puzzle? Can I double click them? Yes, I have. <laughs> all right, let's try that. Double click the A's. No, that's not going to work as well, I don't think. A is in one of those two. Now, if A was here, we know A goes with G. So if that is A, that's G. But that seems possible. So we can't rule that out. Which probably means it's right. Um, now, C we looked at. D doesn't look very propitious, does it? don't think D looks propitious at all. E? Moderately. Well, yeah, E is a bit restricted in box 6. F? F is also moderately restricted up there. Mm, maybe not great, though. G? I know we have got some Gs, but we haven't got... Oh, no, we haven't got any G's in the middle three rows. So we get a, a useless pencil mark. Can we rule G out from that one? Yes, because G goes with A. So that is not G, because that would have to be A, and it can't be. So G is now in one of those two. Okay, let's try H. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't look great. No idea what we can do with that. So I is the last digit that needs to... This needs to do work. And I is not going to do work. Right, so there must be... There's either something we can do now with... With the logic that we've... We've got in terms of... The position of digits around the place. Ah, there's something. I've got a BI pair here. So this must be a B I pair, which means that's a D, that's a D, and that's an I. Is that not going Ah that no, that does do something, doesn't it? Because ah yeah, that's good. Because B and I pair up, and that is a B or an I. So what must this be? It must be B or I and it can't be I. That does lots, because that therefore must be B. Which means this is I, this is B, this is now D. <laughs> we, get, we get two cells in the corner that have both got high written in them. Um, that's definitely not A, is it? But when I, when I placed, oh, well that's not B anymore. But when I placed this digit, I'm sure I took the position of a G. Because we worked out that G couldn't go there, didn't we? So that must be G. That now must be A by Sudoku. And A, we know, goes with G. So I get another digit there. That does the G and the E at the top of columns 5 and 6. E by Sudoku I can now place in box... Yeah, this is great. It's actually filling in more of it. Um, I've got acid... <laughs> I've got acid and E and G here. Uh, and B I can place. So let's do that. Ah, that's a B. I, I just want to write B into that square. Uh, okay, so what are those digits now? F and F and H maybe. Ah, we're going to be able to get those after we get these. Uh, he said confidently and erroneously perhaps. That's F and H now. So this, I oh know it's going to be here. That might have to be D by the looks of things. That's going to be good. So these squares are, I is one of them, I, F, and H. And that's not F. <laughs> We've got a high pair in column 8. That one, E, F, E, F, I. No, F H I. F H I. That's not I. Uh, hang on. So we're left with sort of a deadly pattern on. Uh, 
on F's, H's and I's, which is... I can't see how to resolve that immediately. Right, so... Oh, that's gorgeous. I've just noticed this. Sorry if you've been if you've noticed this before. Look. <laughs> the the cage the the yellow cage letters spell, spell out caged there. <laughs> that's beautiful. Is there anything else like that in here? Oh my goodness, there is. Right. Look at this. Oh my goodness, so, I'm so sorry. Has that been... Sh well, it's probably been staring at me for ages. Headache. Oh, that's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> We've got a caged headache to deal with. I haven't even thought about this line. Right, this line has to be split up, doesn't it? Into, into, into thingies that add up to 10. Now, we know several thingies that add up to 10. B and I add up to 10. Uh, C and F add up to 10. Uh, no, no, not C and H. Uh, hang on. B C, F, B, I. There was another one I saw. What was it? A and G, I think. A and G. B, I. So, so big calf. Big calf are the letters that add up to 10. Well, no, that's not the best way of thinking about that because b b bigger f c b i g a f c bigger f c the famous football club bigger f c these weren't okay. So is it to do with five? Then is what I'm now thinking of. So bigger f c. So those digits can't be five. So five is either, um, let me try and do this. Oh, that's, I can't see the letters anymore. All right, let's put five in the middle. Um, five is D, E, or H. Uh, and that's, that's simply because obviously we know that these dominoes here they all have to have different digits in them. So BI could be 1, 9, 2, 8, 3, 7, or 4, 6. It can't be 5. And the same is true for CF. The same is through, true for AG. So the 5 is one of these digits. Now, the interesting thing about that is that all three of these digits, or all three of these letters, sorry, are in the word headache. So... Yeah, okay, so so whichever one of these is 5, the other two are going to be a pair that add up to 10. So if H was 5, E and D would add up to 10. So if H is 5, so E would have to be lower than, E would be the low digit. Um, because obviously if this was 5 and this was say 8 5 and 8 is more than 10 and we couldn't make this line we couldn't divide the top part of it into a contiguous sequence that added up to 10 so if this is 5 this is low so it's 1, 2, 3 or 4 and then a would have to provide a balance. What's A? We know oh, A A is part of another sequence. Oh, I see. Hang on, but it's wow. Okay, this is this is really in, it's very interesting actually. So, wow. Okay, so what we're actually being told here, in a very coded way, 
is that D is 5, I think. And the reason for that is quite ridiculously, well, not, co not complicated or convoluted, it's brilliant. It's brilliant, but it's to do with the nature of the word. <laughs> it's to do with the nature of the word headache, and the fact that at the start of the word headache there is an H and an E, and at the end of the word headache there is an H and an E. So, the question we should ask ourselves is this one: Is it possible for H or E to be five? So imagine that H was five for a moment. Let's actually just change those those to five. What do we now know about E? Well, for the reasons I mentioned before, E cannot be a big number. So E has to be a tiny number. It has to be a one, two, three, or four, which means that on neither side of this line do we have 10 yet, which means we must extend. So we must be looking at, for a 10 sum at the top, we must at least extend to an A, and for a 10 sum at the bottom, we must at least extend to a C. But A and C are not the same letter. So it's now clear that at least one side of this, either the top or the bottom, still can't have got to 10. Now, if it was, if it was the top side that hadn't got to 10, we'd have to then include this digit as, as, the, as the extra digit. And that cannot be right, because if we've said H is five, E and D add up to 10. That's, that's the nature, they are the fourth pair. So in fact, what we'd have to do is we'd have to say, okay, well, that means we've got to go down this side in terms of uh, thingy, thingy, thingies. <laughs> The technical term but that that means that the problem with that is that you can't you can't join up the high digit with anything it has to sit on its own yeah it's, it's quite hard to explain this I don't know um, let me maybe I can do it a different way maybe I can do it a different way that would make it clearer so if e or h was five I think we, we can we can say very confidently that if we do this as the top string and this as the bottom string, it's possible one of those strings adds up to 10, but not both because they have a different composition. Now, that means one of them needs to extend. Now, it cannot be the top one that extends um, well, no, it could, it could be if, 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 if this was the 5, if E was the 5. Because if E is the 5, then D and H are adding up to 10. But, but obviously if we add in the D, the D and the H are adding to 10, so we can't extend this. If H is 5, the E and the D are adding to 10, so we can't extend this. So in fact, we can say, we can say absolutely that E, A, that the top cannot extend. So so we would be saying that H, E, and A have to add up to 10, which means we have to extend the bottom to this point. Now, we can't include the D in this sequence because, the, because we know that D does accompany either E or H, which have appeared in this sequence already and adds up to 10. So this D sits on, now it sits on its own. It cannot join up. It can't join to the top because we've worked, we've deduced those three must add up to 10. And it can't join to the bottom because the ache part um, is already too big for us to subsume the D into it and add, because we'll be adding the D to the E or the H, which makes the, the fourth pair that adds up to 10. I think that's as good as I can explain it. I know it's not perhaps as crisp. I mean, I mean it is, it's beautifully crisp. It's just slightly difficult to articulate if you understand what I mean um, but this is all good this is all good for the following reason that means that because e and h cannot be five d is five and that means I should be able to just double click all of the d's in the grid and d is not an ambiguous digit because it's not f h or i and I should just be able to write five. Oh, right hang on I'm going to do that again 
I didn't realise I was going to clear fog. It's clearing fog. Watch. So it cleared. Let's just do it again. I'm just trying to see exactly what's getting revealed here. So it clears the fog there and it clears the fog here. And it makes my caged. My caged. Cage. <laughs> uh, okay, so this adds up to AA. Is that. Is that a product or a concatenation? Um. I would have guessed, I would have guessed this is either 11, 22 or 33 or something like that, rather than the multiplication of A times A. Yeah, I mean, killer cages don't normally involve multiplying the two digits in the top. No, yeah, okay, it's going to be concatenation, I think. Uh, if this doesn't work, then we'll go back and think again. But okay, right, this, this is five different digits. They can't only add up to 11. Uh, because the triangular number for 5 is 15, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. So this is either 22 or 33. And it's not 33. Because if this was 33, A would be 3. And that would mean this digit was 3. And that would mean these four digits have to add up to 30. We can't make four different digits add up to 30 if one of those digits is a 5, because 7, 8, and 9 only add up to 24. So we'd never get high enough. So, so this is a 22 cage, and that means A is 2. Right, so we're just going to double-click the A's now and write 2 in. Okay. <laughs> and that's revealed that the, the big blue cage... It's totally as big. <laughs> and right, okay. And also, A joined with, yeah, j joins with G on a line. So G is now 8. Oh, we should probably record all this, shouldn't we? So G is 8. A was 2. D was 5. Uh, so we can delete these two. And we need to make, uh, we need to double click our G's and make all of those 8's. We've cleared all the fog now. So, so what does that mean? Have we? 22. Uh, how do we, how do we finish this off? Um, have we learned anything more about the world? I don't know yet. Let's think. I'm not sure if I meant to know what the big cage adds up to. This was, what was this? This was 22. Okay, this is 22 and at the moment We've got 15 in it. So these squares add up to 7. And they are E and C. Do we know anything about E and C? We know they're both part of the word ice. Um, I don't know, actually. I'm not sure. Okay, but we hang on. We also knew, didn't we, that which were the which were the digits which where we'd worked out. Oh, I see. Now I've got this now. Right. So what we worked out before was that one of the digits, E, H, and D. Oh, or one of the pairs, E, H, and D, from, from two of the three digits, E, H, and D, added up to 10, didn't we? So now I know those add up to 10, and I know these add up to 10. So on the long line, these four cells have to add up to 10, because 2, 5, and 2 haven't added up to 10 yet. So C is 1. That's it. That's really clever. Wow. So C is 1. Now, 
That means F, look, oh, this is going to do all sorts of things. F has become 9. That's right, so C is 1. F is 9, but F is a bit of an ambiguous digit. So, oh, that's good. I can double click the big ones and that's going to fill in. But the other thing that's doing is it's going to allow me to get E. Because that, I think that means E has to be 6 by the maths we were doing earlier. Because we've got 16, we need 22. E is 6. So we can fill in E as 6. Which means that H is now 4. So E is 6. H is 4. Let's double click that. Oh, I see. And we've got... Oh, and so B and I are 3 and 7. Oh, oh gosh, wow. Okay, so now we know now we need to use the secret. And that's going to disambiguate. Oh, this is so ridiculous, Marty. You are such a clever man. You really are. Good grief. Right. So what what we have to do now isn't well, I, I know what big is. I know what big is. Because because B and I are the digits three and seven. Now if you know the secret of Sudoku, you'll be able to work out which is which B is and which I is. Because if we look at a complete box of a Sudoku, now this is a secret I only tell my very favourite people. Don't worry, you're definitely one of my favourite people if you're watching this. The, the whole contents of a single box of a Sudoku is the digits 1 to 9 because of the rules of Sudoku. Now if you add up the digits 1 to 9, you get 45. And that means... We can actually deduce what the entire value of a Sudoku is. What, a, what is the entire grid? What does it add up to? Well, it must be 9 lots of 45, and that's 405. So how could B be 7? That would make this 738, and it's definitely... It's covering up most of the Sudoku grid, but the Sudoku grid does not add up to more than 700. So that means it must be the other way around. So what we're being told is that B is 3, which means... Oh, <laughs> that's 3 in the corner. That's 3 in the spotlight, losing its religion. So that got two songs for being a B and being a 3. Um, I, which is there, is now 7. So B is 3. I is 7. Um, but what? But we're being told more than that, aren't we? Because now, the only digit in this puzzle that's unresolved is this one, effectively. This is... Oh, what a beautiful finish. I, I, this is... I understand why people are saying this is one of their favourite puzzles of the year, because it just should be. Because now... Okay, big is 300 and 78 double a which is these digits is 22 378 plus 22 is 400 which means that uncaged digits in this puzzle must add up to five and there is a one here so that in the corner must be a four and four is an h so that's an h which means that's an H, so that becomes 4, that's an H, and that's an H. Which means this became F, which is 9. Um, and I was, what was I? 7. So that should be 7, and that should be 7. And that's done the puzzle, which is very weird. <laughs> I don't think that, that's just finished it. So it unwound the deadly pattern because we could deduce by maths what the corner digit was. I can't see why that would be wrong. Let's see if it's right. Yes. You have solved the puzzle. 200 people have solved that in a day. Well, there is a reason and that is word of mouth. This People are talking about this because it is, abs it is sublimely brilliant. It's funny. Um, I love the fact that this is, I love the fact this has been done with real words as well. Isn't that impressive? Headache, caged, big. Ah, this is just delightful. It's delightful, Marty. That is really world class. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous puzzle. Take a bow and 
please let the comments reflect how brilliant this is. Um, I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind, and they should be in this instance. Not about my solving, but about Marty's fabulous, fabulous construction. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>